All right, so grab a cup of coffee, and today we're going to be talking more about Angular Material, in particular, the slider component. And I thought we'd start off with a easier thing. I know last one we talked about the button. This is also an easier component, and I think uh, it's a lot better than trying to do it yourself. And if you're wondering what Angular Material is, go check out my last video. We installed it, and we used the pre-made themes and to kind of change the color scheme of the components. And if you like this kind of stuff, don't forget to hit subscribe. I uh, really do appreciate everyone that has been subscribing recently. And it's just me as I learn things in code and come up with new videos, ideas, I share them on here with you. And hopefully that way we can learn together. But today we're going to, like I said, talk about the slider. And this is the slider, pretty basic. It's just a way for someone to select a value without having to physically type it in. It's a different way for people to select some kind of value. And the use case that comes to my mind is pretend you're on Zillow and you have a max budget of X amount of dollars. How or what would be a good way for the filter to look like for the user to select? Sure, they could type in, you know, my budget's $200,000 or whatever your budget may be. But maybe there's a slider and uh, they're able to select the top of their budget that way. So 300000 they could select it with this instead. I don't know. That's just the use case that came up in my mind. And maybe that's the one we will use for this example. So the slider starts out pretty simple. The tag of the element is just MAT slider. Actually, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And the first thing I'm going to do with this slider in the opening tag, I'm going to give it the thumb label property. So thumb label just like that. And what that does, and we won't see it just yet because we have to add a few more things into this opening tag, but what that does is as I hold on to it, we go left and right, it will display the value I'm over right up top. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. But besides the thumb label, we can set a min. So let's say the minimum you know, price of the houses in the area is like $50,000. And the max, let's say, is $500,000. And then we can also give it what kind of increments are we going to step through in this slider. So in our case, it wouldn't make sense to have increments of 10 or 20 because to go from 50,000 to 500,000 in steps of 20, just 20, not 20,000, just 20, wouldn't make any sense. So you kind of have to think about that. In your scenario, what would be the best step value? So I would say for us, let's just do steps of $50,000. So the minimum they can select is 50,000, and then the next value that they can select is 100,000. And then if we wanted to just give a starting value, we could say, why don't we just start at 100,000? So let's see how this looks. Hopefully it compiles okay. No, it does not. So just like the button, besides you know putting it into our HTML, we also have to tell Angular to bootstrap this module for this slider when it goes to compile the project. So if we wanted to, we can go to the API tab here in the slider component, and I'm just going to copy this import that we're going to place at the top of the app module TypeScript file. And I'll just place it right here. And just like the button, we have to add it to the imports array. So I'm just going to put it in the bottom of the imports array, and now it is imported into the project. And when I go to serve it, and when it compiles, it should be able to find that module now. And though it did compile successfully, I guess I want to save this. And then I'm also going to, this is the button that we talked about uh, last time. I went ahead and I removed the pug picture and all that other stuff that we were playing around with in this project, just made it kind of more clean. And I'm just going to put a break right here. So the slider is now under the button. And let's see how that looks. Here it is. We have the button from last video, but here's the slider and notice that when I start to pull it, it now gives the value up here. The, the value is pretty large, so we might want to change that in a way that maybe it says 450K instead of 450,000 because that value, unfortunately, looks like it's too big for this thumb label. So what we can do to change this to, like it says right here, 250, instead of 250,000, it says 250K, we can go ahead and add another property to the slider. And this one's going to be bound to the display 
width in the element. And here we can write some kind of method to format how this is going to be displayed. I haven't written this method yet. We're going to do that in the TypeScript behind app component. Um, so I guess I will just name it format slider. And I'm sure after I save it's going to error because we haven't created this method yet, but we will uh, right now. So let's go over to the app component TypeScript and I can actually go ahead and get rid of this show pick method. And down here, I can create that format slider method. And with this format, we're actually passing in a value. So in our case, it's going to be the 250,000. Oh, we can't see it because we got this error message, but it's going to be that 250,000. So we can say value, which is going to be of type number. And then we can say return value divided by 1000 and then plus the character K. I guess it should be a lowercase K. And just to make this look a little better, I'm going to put some more breaks because it was still pretty close to uh, the button. And we could, yeah, we could do some formatting with CSS, but I'm just lazy and I'm just going to put a, a bunch of breaks. And let's go ahead. And now we can see it fits very nicely. It's actually right on the edge there. But now it's formatted in a way that it adds that K because we did a little custom formatting with the slider using the display width uh, input right here. And then we created this format slider method, which formats it in the way that we want. Okay, so that's the slider component and Angular material. And in the next one, I guess we'll continue looking at some other interesting materials as we go along. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this was helpful for you to learn a bit about the slider and... I hope to see you in the next one.